Abby219, welcome. Awesome. Sweet, guys. So let's cut to the chase real quick. I'm going to switch over my screen. And I'm going to show you some of the basic things that I do with Final Cut Pro 10. Once again, this is not necessarily uh, the program that you have to use. You do have the option to implement some of these uh, uh, steps in virtually any uh, video editing software. But if you happen to be using Final Cut Pro, then hopefully this helps you a little bit. Um, and once again, if you do have any questions, drop them in the comments. If for some reason I missed them, post them again because I'm going to take brief, uh, a little bit of a pause and then jump into the comment section. But I'm going to switch over here to my Mac tutorial screen and you should be able to see my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and uh, explain a little bit of what I'm doing here in the top uh, of Final Cut Pro. And in this case, you notice that I've created a brand new library. Um, the library, consider the Final Cut Pro library or pretty much any library in, in most software uh, as kind of like the place where everything is, right? A lot of people often get confused with the whole library concept. Uh, but, you know, hopefully with this, you get a little bit more information. So the item that I'm clicking in the top left right now, it says EMT Films Live. That is a library. It has four little uh, squares over here. Um, I don't know if you can kind of like see that properly. You might have to uh, full screen it or get a little bit, you know, kind of like a bigger template, so to speak. If not, I guess we can kind of like move it around, but I am highlighted in the top there and you should be able to see something that says EMT Films Live. That is the library. Inside that library, we often add events. I personally use events to organize the footage. I might have an event for a video that I'm doing for a DJI Osmo Mobile 3. I might have another event for a Blends review or something like that. So I personally use the event situation um, as a way to organize my footage, similar to what you would do with albums in photos. Um, that's kind of like the workflow that worked the best for me. By default, you must have an event in your library. So by default, you'll notice that there's one over here, 51220, that got created uh, by default. Now here's the kicker. The video that I'm gonna be editing right now, it's just a sequence, very minimalistic, very simple, from videos that I captured at Disneyland. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug my headphones again because I wanna make sure that I'm listening to the footage. Uh, this is uh, random uh, footage that I recorded for other videos that I'm actually using uh, just for this demo. So I apologize if you hear weird things or environmental noises and music and things in the background. But <clears throat> what I'm going to go ahead and do is rename this default library at any single time. If you want to create a, a, a brand new library, right? This is the library. This is the event. You do have the option on their files to go under new and create a new either event or a new library. And once again, I also create the library, like the entirety of, you know, where everything resides uh, for different, like big projects. Like for example, I collaborate a lot with Smooth. I collaborate a lot with Moza and I create, uh, you know, a string of videos for DJI products and stuff like that. So I would do a DJI for uh, a, a library for DJI stuff or a library for, you know, uh, Smooth or a library for Moza or for whatever it is that I'm working for. I usually have like two or three libraries, not too much. Uh, but then I cycle the events based on the content. That way I, I know where things are. But in this case, since we already have a library, I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new event. You do have the option also to rename events if you want. So you can right click uh, and, you know, create a new event, create a new project and things like that. You do have the option also to click and hold on the event and you can name it whatever you want. So this is going to be uh, Disney Osmo 3 B-roll. Perfect. Alrighty. So pretty much everything that I put inside that event is relevant to Disneyland B-roll, you know, from the Osmo Mobile 3. Hopefully this makes sense. It's a little weird at the beginning, but all you're doing is establishing a residence and then the little different rooms. Those are the events, so to speak, for you to be able to organize your footage and know uh, what is it that you have under that little folder section. 
Looking at the comments here, I have Mr. RBB saying, I like to use Luma Fusion on my iPad, not as advanced as Final Cut, but I still have the option to export it to Final Cut. That it's true. And I personally use Luma Fusion and I bring things over to Final Cut whenever I do have to uh, create things that I might not be able to do on the iPad or the iPhone in this case. If you're interested in learning how to bring in that XML, right? Once you export the XML file from Luma Fusion, which is fantastic, I highly encourage anybody uh, uh, to everybody, uh, everyone to download Luma Fusion. It's one of the, if not the best, video editing app right now on mobile. Uh, you do have the option to import XML in uh, this screen that I'm showing you right now. And that way you can pretty much look inside your documents folder or movies folder or even your iCloud drive and bring things over if you started them already in, you know, other programs, which is fantastic. Uh, Mr. RBB, hopefully this answers your question, which is uh, definitely a, a, a clutch feature from LumaFusion now because you can literally finish a project and then just add the finishing touches like color grading and things like that after the fact. So uh, it's very, very cool. Perfect. All righty. So in this case, since I already have the footage there, I want to import the media. Now you do have a couple of different options to import your footage to Final Cut and what, whichever video editing program you're using. Um, you do have the option to click where it says uh, import media, right? Side this is kind of like your media viewer, so to speak. And then you also have the option to import your footage by clicking on the little import window over here. Um, I personally don't use this as much, uh, because I often bring it up from my finder. So what I do from my finder here is, is that I open up a finder window. Let me actually show you that. Let me bring the finder window and I created already a folder that is titled Disneyland DJI Osmo Mobile 3. I already did this preemptively, right? And I organized after the fact, right, I got home, I filmed, I got home, and then I sorted out the footage for iPhone 11 Pro Max footage. And then I also filmed with my Pixel 4 XL. I typically bring through two phones if I have to, or I just kind of like take my webs and <laughs> use it as a secondary angle if I'm shooting product B-roll. But I organize these two uh, angles, so to speak, or these two cameras and folders uh, a little bit more traditional. On iOS, I do film and I use iCloud Photo Library. So when I go home, it's already there. So I just pretty much export it. Um, and one of the reasons why I do this, and very, very important, is because I have a computer that does not have a whole lot of internal storage. And this is kind of like a little bit boring <laughs> at the beginning, uh, but this is gonna make a huge, huge difference. So for example, before I bring in that footage, if I go to Final Cut and I go to Preferences, you do have the option uh, to tell the program in this case. Let me see if you can actually see that on my screen. Uh, it doesn't seem like you can see that real quick. Bear with me for one second, trying to see if you can get the Final Cut preferences here. Let me bring him over. Window capture. A new Final Cut window. There we go. You should be able to see it now. <laughs> We're learning on the fly here. I'm actually using OBS right now. Um, and I've only used it a couple times. But anyways, when we go over to the Final Cut uh, uh, settings here, one of the major hurdles that I encountered when I was starting to edit on a bigger program like this is the fact that when you import your footage into the program, by default, it will copy everything to the library, right? And to me, this was a huge, huge, huge uh, storage constraint because if you were rocking a 256 gigabyte storage computer or 512, this is gonna literally like dump the footage inside the library, which is inside of your computer by default. So you definitely wanna make sure you're adjusting this accordingly. If you have a lot of room, then you can copy the files and leave them in the library in your movies folder, or you can leave the files where they reside. So if you have them in an external hard drive and things like that, you can actually have the library reference those files where they reside. 
hopefully this is not too confusing hopefully this gives you a little bit better context i personally use leave the files in place because i put those files in an external hard drive so my computer doesn't become super full i have a macbook pro 15 inch 256 gigabytes of storage and usually a, a single day of filming at disneyland it's like almost 100 150 gigs because i shoot 4k 60 and so and so so it's you know uh, adjust this accordingly because it could be the difference of you having to stop a project in the middle and then move things around or you know have something a little bit smoother so perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and close that one up and go back to Final Cut here now before I import my footage I'm gonna take a look at the comments if anybody has any questions or concerns I have Ron over here that he has to get back to work. No worries. You're definitely going to be able to watch this after the fact as a replay. Um, but now we're going to get back into editing, uh, getting a little bit more into the groove of editing. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the footage from my finder. But what I'm going to do here is just simply grab those two folders. You see how I selected those folders. I'm going to go ahead and drop them into my library right into that event specifically into that disneyland uh, uh filter so to speak so notice how now inside my event i have two keywords that allow me to recognize oh that's iphone 11 footage oh this is pixel 4xl footage so that's uh that's kind of nice that's like a really nice uh, workaround the whole folder inside a folder inside a folder kind of thing right so i had an event inside a folder and then now we have subfolder so to speak internally i personally use this also for camera a camera b or vlog b-roll profile side top right you can organize those and you do have the option to apply these keywords after the fact now give me a thumbs up if you can actually hear that background noise. I'm also testing a new way of making sure that the system audio is going through. So if you do have the option, give me a little thumbs up if you could hear this background noise. Perfect. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and give it a second. Wait, catch up to the stream because I do notice that it's a little... It's a little delayed over here. And then hopefully you are indeed getting that sound. <laughs> you guys have no idea how hard I work to get that audio from the system to kind of like merge seamlessly with the microphone audio. So if you do hear that background noise, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah, the stream's a little delayed because, of course, you know, we're streaming more than just our face, but thank you for letting me know. Now, very, very important here, right? We have our event and we have our little subfolders inside that event that we have the option, of course, to, oh, I want a little piece of here. I want a little piece of that. So it's kind of cool to uh, be organized in that way, especially when you're dealing with a lot of footage. But one thing that's very important is the music. Now, let's go ahead and create that project first and then go ahead and pick up the music. So I'm gonna click on the event and all the way to the top where it says uh, file, or if you right click on the actual project itself, you do have the option to create a brand new event. So let me see if you can kind of see that. Uh, no, it does not show. <laughs> Anyhow. At the very top where it says file in Final Cut, I'm going to create a brand new project. And then that gives you the option to create a brand new uh, project in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and create a 4K project at 24 FPS. And let me go ahead and bring this window capture so you can see it as well. Cool. Now we're, now we're learning here. Um, I don't think this is a desktop on screen control item zero. Nope. Never mind. Anyhow, so I'll show you in a moment in a different angle 
just so you can kind of see what I mean here. But I'm going to create a project in 4K at 24 frames per second. And that's what you actually see at the top here. And that untitled project that's going to be called DJI Osmo Mobile 3 B-Roll. Right? Now I have a project in which I can action all the footage from my entire event. And notice how at the bottom of the screen now I have kind of like a little space for me to start dropping footage here. So technically speaking, I can just start grabbing clips and bringing them down into my timeline to start editing because I created that brand new project. And you can create as many projects as you'd like. Now notice on the opposite side of the screen, all the way up to the top right, uh, there's a window that gives you the resolution of the project itself. It's uh, 3840 by 2560, that's UHD, which is considered 4K. And then of course you do have the frame rate, which is 23.98. If you are looking for your footage to look a little bit more cinematic, that is the frame rate that you should be aiming for. I personally shoot at a higher frame rate and then bring things down to 24. There's a lot of pros, there's a lot of cons here and there, but that has actually worked very well with me. And there's a whole different conversation about frame rate, shutter speed, and all that good stuff, but we have covered that in the channel, and I'm actually looking to get back into that cinematic talk in a moment uh, after we finish a couple videos this week, so that should be coming soon, but I personally edit and render everything at 24 frames or 23.98, which is just a little, little bit less. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of context, depending on the programs that you're using, that might give you the option uh, of course, to bring things down to 24 or 30 or even 60. So those are my project settings and there's a modify button uh, there that you do have the option to uh, adjust and modify as well. So, perfect. So now let's go ahead and bring in the music. I'm actually using, pu -pu -pu, let me bring up Chrome here real quick. You should be able to see my Chrome browser. I'm actually using a website for my music called Thematic. And Thematic is uh, where I get most of my music, if not pretty much like 98% of all the music that I use for my YouTube videos. It's a website that was created by the YouTuber Michelle Fawn and now she's like, you know, she has makeup brands and a lot of companies and stuff like that. But they're phenomenal. Their stuff is great and so far, as of right now, uh, it is a free option. Uh, they're looking to incorporate different business models soon, but right now you could totally check it out it's a free website they do not pay me to use them or anything i just personally really really like them and i actually downloaded already you can kind of see at the bottom left of my screen where i actually downloaded the song but the cool thing about this website is that you can preview the music before you download it let me go ahead and refresh that website here <clears throat> gotcha <laughs> There we go. Um, I created a project for this actually, live editing. And then I'm using here a song by Mark Generous. So I'm gonna get play. And then you should be able to, you know, hear the song in a little while or whatnot, and then download the entire track. Once you go to your downloads in this website, you do have the option to get the links so you can give proper credit to the artist that created the song. So this is another alternative for you to get uh, music for your videos, hellothematic.com is the website. Totally recommend it. There it is. Took a little while. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear that. Nice. So, I really like this new artist, Mark Generous. Ryan Little is one of my favorite ones. I've been using him for a really long time. Mark Generous has been one of my favorite ones recently as well, so I totally recommend it. And once you hit the download button at the bottom right of the screen next to the little plus button, then that goes straight into your downloads. So that's really cool. Uh, don't forget, if you are using music from Thematic or from any artist in general, please give them credit because making videos is hard enough. Making music is really hard as well. Um, so it's really cool for you to be able to, you know, pay that forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip 
uh, uh, copy Mark Jenner's link and post that. It should be already in the description. Now, going back to Final Cut over here, I do have the option to bring in that song because I downloaded that today. Mark Generous. Actually, forgot the name of the song real quick. Let me bring it up, and it's called As I Got Ready. Cool. Let me bring that down. As I Got Ready. Perfect. I'm going to bring in that song into my library, my, my little event here. So I actually dragged and dropped it from my downloads folder into the Disney Osmo 3 B-roll event. And now it's part of my clip repertoire. Cool. I personally like to edit to my music mainly. So what I'm going to do first is just scrub, take a look at some of the footage, get a feel for it. I apologize once again if you hear anything weird uh, from the background or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I really like this shot, so I'm going to go ahead and start it here. Now, here's a really cool thing about Final Cut, iMovie, uh, Premiere Pro, and all these programs, is that you can actually start editing from that corner viewfinder window here, right? I'm scrubbing. I don't know if you can actually see my mouse. Let me see if there's an option in OBS for you to <laughs> see my mouse. Duck. System UI. We'll figure it out in the next one. <laughs> I just noticed that the mouse doesn't show in the stream. But anyways, I am actually scrubbing. You can kind of see on the top left of my screen, I have a uh, box highlighted in yellow. And that gives me the option to preview the footage before I drop it in the timeline. So when you hit your space bar, you do have the option to hit play, so to speak. And it kind of like starts going. I love to use this. And with a tap of the letter I in your keyboard, you can set your in point. And then you can actually get your out point by simply tapping the O right where your plate head stopped. So notice how I only have selected a small little portion in that little frame over there. Uh, which is really cool because it makes your editing so much faster and easier. You can actually technically edit the video from that corner and just simply click and drag and bring that footage down to your timeline. Very, very cool. If you click or tap in this case on your keyboard on the letter E, it starts dropping the, the clips automatically to the end uh, of your timeline. So. Here's an example. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit over here. I'm going to select another one. That's a cool shot. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. You see how I selected I in that left side of the box in yellow on my viewfinder at the top left. And then I'm going to scrub and I'm going to select O to be the out point right around, right around here. Oh. Now that I've selected the chunk where I want the clip to start and end, all I gotta do is hit the letter E on my keyboard and boom, it goes to the end of the timeline. So back to back, so to speak. So that's really nice because it just makes your editing so much faster. Once you start getting the keyboard shortcuts, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a lot easier. Uh, remember to check the help tap on your application because you do have the option to get those keyboard shortcuts and kind of like practice them and memorize them. If not, you can always manually kind of like select and click and drag, select the portion of the click that you want, and then bring that down manually as well. So notice how I'm going in a chronological order from top to bottom over here, just to keep consistency as far as what the video was filmed throughout in terms of like that day. So I'm gonna go down here. <clears throat> I have a couple of really cool shots here with the flowers. So. This is a sliding shot with the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the I, scrub a little bit further. Actually, I noticed that there's like a little jump here. It wasn't seamless, so now I'm gonna start it from that point on. You see, you can actually veto your footage and make sure you're getting the best parts before you 
bring them in. So let's go ahead and hit play. Nice. And... Ooh, that's a cool shot right there. Right when the glare shows up, I'm going to use that as a transition point. So that's really cool. So I'm going to head and hit the O. Right? And I'm going to hit E. Or just simply drag that and place it towards the end of my timeline. That is kind of cool. Let me see if we can do something about just pushing this a little bit further up in OBS here because I noticed that the uh, window capture here for for Final Cut's a little bit further down. You can kind of can't see the whole thing, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit. There we go. Bear with me for one second. Just constructing this whole thing real time here. <laughs> All right. Eh, we'll figure it out. There we go. Awesome. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better, uh, you know, a little bit better of, of a view of what we have going on here. Perfect. I think that's definitely going to feel a little bit better. Anyways, getting back to the footage over here. <clears throat> Um, notice how we have now three basic clips that gives us a sense of direction, right? If I hit the play button, I'm going to go ahead and mute them because I don't need that background audio. So I just actually mute them. You do have the option to select them, right click and detach, uh, the audio as well if you need to. But in this case, I just went ahead and lowered and increased that little line underneath. Now, before I drop the music and create a little sequence for you guys, do we have any questions, any thoughts, any concerns? I see a couple of people joining the stream. Lopez, welcome, welcome. Rap H. Ben, welcome to the stream. Septian, Septian Patterson, welcome, welcome. Just figure out where the heck the thumbs up is located. <laughs> and Cash Austin, welcome, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for hanging out, guys. I appreciate your time. Um, this is, uh, you know, the first stream that I've done since, you know, we're all staying home and all that stuff. I was, you know, wasn't really feeling all too in it to start streaming, but we recently we've been feeling a lot better. So hopefully we can continue to do this. And if you have any questions or any feedback, please make sure you leave them, uh, after the fact or during the session in the comment section so we can answer your questions. Um, and yeah give you a couple minutes here for the stream to catch up if you were to have any questions make sure to drop them in the comment section because it is a little delayed <laughs> all right so i'm gonna get back in the fold here and i'm gonna go ahead and grab that song i'm gonna go ahead and select my event at the top of the screen here and i'm gonna grab that song and bring it down i'm not gonna use the whole thing but the song has a really nice vibe to it. I usually love to use the uh, kind of like audio levels at the very far right of my screen. Notice when I hit play, there's like some green bars in the far right and that allows me to see the levels. You wanna be below zero and around six, negative six, not too low, not too high in order for your volume to be consistent throughout. Um, I personally struggled with that when I was starting to do YouTube videos a couple of years ago. Uh, music was super loud and the voice was very low. So you want to make sure you're looking at your audio levels. Um, that way you have consistency throughout your videos. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play over here and I'm going to edit to the beat. I'm going to lower the volume of my track here first. Notice how it says zero uh, dB when I put the cursor right in between the, like right in that middle line of that clip. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down a little bit or at the very top right, there is a volume section that you do have the option to adjust and maneuver where it says volume. I typically bring it down to negative three. Um, that way we get a little bit smoother balance because people often have their volumes, uh, the volumes on their phones either too loud and stuff like that. So I'd rather be a little bit lower and not disrupt something. And this gives me a little bit more consistency as far as the audio levels. So let's check it out. Oh, and by the way, you might not get it 
real time because there might be a slight delay. So if the editing doesn't really make sense to you, I apologize. I did notice a, a slight offbeat delay since there's a little bit of latency here and there, so. Okay, very important. Since I'm a musician, I'm already used to this, but I like to find the pattern of the song. So notice my head, if I listen to the music. Right, the reason why I like to get acclimated with the song in terms of the tempo, so to speak, is because I do want to make sure that I am editing to the beat. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and cut things up a little bit. And I notice that this is not slow and we all love slow-mo. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and slow this clip down real quick here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Command R gives you that kind of green-ish top on top of the clip. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that slow to 50%. Right, there's a little drop down menu that pops up that you can bring it down to 50%. And now notice how this clip is gonna look after it renders. So if I hit the space bar, it's like a little slower. And notice where I stopped it, right? If I go back, I'm counting in my head. And right up, right there, when that hit's about to come, that's my cutting point. So in this case, I'm going to bring things down to my playhead, right? I want to make sure that I'm, you know, cutting that clip over here to that cut there. And then I'm also going to slow down the following clip, the picture clip. So Command R gives me that normal speed menu. And then on this little drop down menu there, where the play hits at, I can slow that down to 50%. So, zooming out a little bit so you can kind of see how things are looking. Slow-mo, <laughs> hands down, slow-mo is my favorite kind of B-roll. That's why I shoot at 60 frames per second and beyond, because it gives me the option to do that. Now, when you're doing 60 FPS, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence as far as motion goes and frame rate and stuff like that, shutter speed, but I feel at this point the phone is doing such a good job in regulating your shutter speed and the motion is not so high speed that it really doesn't make any difference to the kind of video that we're making here. So now let's make an, another cut or another implement another idea here. Gotcha. Okay, so these are the kind of shots that I really love. And I am already filming thinking about these kind of shots because I'm already thinking speed ramps, slow to fast, fast to slow, right? So I'm thinking slow to fast and kind of like get that transition into like this part of the sign. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just shoot from the hip here and try to edit that really cool speed ramp. So perfect. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and B, that's for your blade. If you tap on your keyboard the word B, you're gonna get the blade, and then you can cut that clip right where your plate has sat. So, perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it again, like here. And this is totally organic, I didn't plan this. Uh, notice how we have clip at the beginning and now we've sliced this clip in a couple different regions here. What I am going to do here is just speed ramp this up. So I'm just going to go ahead and command R and instead of slow, I'm going to make it fast. So I'm going to click on that little drop down menu. I don't know why that drop down menu is not looking, it's not showing on my stream. Um, but when you click on that slow, let me see if I can actually make it happen. Window, final cut. Uh, nope. Never mind. <laughs> All right, so 
we'll do a much we'll do a little bit better next time when we figure out all that but notice that where i have that yellow playhead there's like a little arrow if you click that arrow you can actually make that faster so i'm going to make it let's say eight times faster eight times faster so let's see how that behaves right now cool let's wait for it to render a little bit here those uh dots at the top of my playhead right right at the top of the clip that means that the clip is rendering in the background and depending on the footage if you're shooting 4k 60 fps you know the files are much bigger so let's see how okay you can kind of see what i'm going for so Okay, so I need to make sure that I squeeze this entire clip in that much space, right in between here and here, right? You got the beginning of the clip and where my playhead's at. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that highlighted clip at the very end, right uh, where you see the, or uh, not the orange, the purple fast 800%. There's like a little highlight line. I'm gonna bring that clip and make it even faster to make it fit in that section here so it stays within the beat. So this should give you a little bit of a better idea of what I'm going for. Let's give it a second for it to catch up. In the meantime, if you do have any other questions, uh, you're more than welcome to drop any quick questions or anything like that uh, in the comment section. Let's check it out. Perfect. So you're getting an idea here, right? And then I'm gonna do another one here. See, it's gotta be like, instead of dun, da, 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 I have to do dun, da, da. So in that first hit that falls in that B, that's where I have to start and then end the, the ramp where the actual pattern start so to speak like, right here like a little offbeat so to speak so and then i i want to make sure that i fit this entire clip <laughs> right here <laughs> so i'm going to go ahead and click command r and make that really fast and once again you do have the option to make this happen in virtually any kind of video editing software, whether it's iMovie, whether it's Premiere Pro, LumaFusion, right? You're just pretty much cutting and making things faster and slower based on your song. So you don't necessarily have to go ahead and run and get Final Cut. You definitely want to start with what you have and then iterate. So let's see how that's turning out. Perfect. So cool. I'm going to extend this clip a little bit more. That way we jump straight to the roses. So just to recap here real quick, we have a, let's go ahead and do a little fade in. So on the far, far, far right of my timeline, you will notice a ribbon uh, that I'm actually clicking, but you can't see it for some reason, <laughs> but all the way to the far right, there's like a little ribbon uh, that gives you those transitions so i'm going to go ahead and enable cross to solve and bring it over at the very beginning to get that really nice fade in effect and then i'm going to do the same with my song there's like a little dot at the very very beginning left side of the clip and you can slide that in and create a fade in effect you do have the option to also gr grab a cross to solve for the audio if you want i virtually never really use them that much but you do have the option as you can see on the screen and that gives you a slow kind of like fade in effect for your footage perfect 
All right, so far so good. Notice how we've been doing this for like 30 minutes and we've only done about 10 seconds of video. So you can imagine how long and hard <laughs> these video editing sessions have been for the recent videos. By the way, after the video, if you do uh, find value on this, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you feel like sharing this with somebody that you know is trying to get into video editing and you would like to see more of these, feel free to share and let me know in the comment section. Uh, but the whole idea is, of course, to try to get better little by little. I know that there might be different options and workflows for other people, but this is what has been working for me in recent times. So let's go ahead and continue to edit this. Now, in order to make this a little bit more dramatic, I'm going to go ahead and add some sounds. So in Final Cut, there are some built-in sounds, and then, I've, of course, I've added more sounds uh, via different plugins that I have purchased, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and click in my top left right above my library there's a little itunes logo or music logo and then a camera button and that gives you the option to cycle through photos garage band projects music from your library and of course sound effects so in this case i'm going to go ahead and use whoosh effects cool thing about final cut is that you do have the option to search so if i'm searching for a whoosh effect then this is gonna give you a ton of different options. Or if you're looking for sirens or hits and things like that, there are some pre-made or you can of course, you know, purchase packs and things like that. I created my own Whoosh Sounds, which I'm gonna be making available soon for everybody to download. Um, but in the meantime, I'm using the ones that are built in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to listen and see which one hits the spot here. I kinda of like that one, it's a little bit you know, more punchy. So let's just bring that one down here. And I'm gonna kind of like align it here as best of my abilities and cut it down a little bit, a little fade in. I'm sorry, a little fade out. And I'm gonna lower the volume probably down to negative six and start seeing how that behaves. So. A little too early. Let's go ahead and move it a couple clicks back, one, two clicks. Eh, more or less. Maybe bring down the volume so we can blend it in a little bit better. A little nifty trick here. Maybe do a little fade in and fade out, shorten it so it doesn't overstay its welcome. Much better. Beautiful. Now, I personally don't like to repeat the same sound back to back to back. Sometimes I'll reverse it, or sometimes I'll just simply switch to a different one. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead to Wish One and bring Wish One down here. And I'm gonna do a similar thing. I'm gonna bring down the volume to like negative six at the top right. You do have control uh, of that and a bunch of programs let you do this as well. And now this is a little bit slower. So now I might have to get a little bit closer and shorten it. A little fade in, fade out, just a little bit. Let me go ahead and command R to make it a faster, right? I'm gonna go ahead and change the speed and make the audio clip a little bit faster, maybe 110% speed. A little bit better. A little fade in, fade out. Okay, a little bit better. It's not gonna be perfect, but you know, for the sake of keeping things kind of like moving, now you have an idea of what we're doing here. So if I hit the play button from the very beginning, you can kind of get an idea of what editing a small B-roll sequence kind of looks like. Cool. Let me go ahead and check this out and listen to it because I'm actually catching up on the stream. Yeah, it's got a little delay. <laughs> uh, after the fact, I'm gonna have to share the final video here so you can see that you're getting an offbeat delay. I was afraid that that was gonna happen, but latency, <laughs> so to speak. But anyhow, um, that's kind of like the whole idea as far as those uh, little edits and so, and so to speak. So I'm just going to keep going 
and then after the fact, if you want to check out the final clip, uh, I'm, I'll make it available. I'll post it on Instagram, so make sure you follow me there. Uh, I'll post it in one of my stories, um, so you can check it out and see what the final result with no latency issues and whatnot looks like. But Perfect, and now we're cutting to the flowers here. Now, for the flowers, notice how it's a really nice shot, but it's too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it slow, but then I'm gonna chop it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that clip, Command R, to change the speed, and I'm gonna do 50% slower. And then here, now, I'm gonna get a little bit better feel of that cinematic look transition i don't know i don't know why but things in slow-mo just look so much better in my opinion <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and hit the play button in a moment let me just wait for it to catch up and then we're gonna go ahead and chop it up in a similar fashion that we did with a previous clip just so we can continue that trend and not just simply change a channel on people so let's go ahead and hit that up and then right here that's where i'm gonna cut Perfect. So I'm gonna cut so it kind of like jumps real quick. There we go. I just removed that entire chunk and now it's gonna be like And then I'm gonna cut with the beat. That way it makes sense in people's brains when they hear it. I'm gonna cut that extra piece there and now you'll notice that it should sound now actually I'm gonna go ahead and cut it a lot closer to the end because I do want to leverage that ray of sunlight that's about to creep into the top right yeah that's a really nice one so and that is my transition point and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce a little transition here I'm gonna go ahead and put two more clips edit those and that's gonna be my little sequence. Usually when I start my videos, you know, your traditional, what's up everybody, welcome back, blah, blah, blah. I start with an introduction, B-roll sequence, 30 seconds or, or one minute, depending on the video, to introduce you guys to what am I doing, um, what am I creating with the product that I'm talking about, or whatever it is that I'm talking about. But so it gives you a little bit of a taste of what the end goal is of the video and hopefully you stick around and it's enticing enough for you to oh yeah i actually want to do that so whoever's trying to start a youtube channel and create feel free to use a similar technique or the same totally up to you and and, and see how it works on your channel so i'm going to go back to my footage in the top left and go pick up some iphone footage here and i'm going to go ahead and grab Oh, this clip looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one here. It's a really nice sequence. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it I and O, right? I just wanna use that a little bit and bring it down to my timeline. Mute it, bring down the volume, and then I'm gonna do a last one here, which is gonna be a pan. But I wanna continue the motion, right? Notice how in the previous clip, the little cart is taken off. So if I hit, if I hit, you know, play, you'll notice how the 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 cart and then credit coaster is continued. Give me one second, cause there we go. I think my wife's on the phone. <laughs> Perfect. Here we go. Nice. Notice how the car is going. So I want to make sure I continue that motion. So I kind of waited and recorded a second car driving by. So I went ahead and I want to pick up on the next clip right where the previous clip ended up before. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the end point here and just complete the range of motion here. Perfect. And put it on the end. Nice. How I miss Disneyland, guys. You have no idea. Um, I wish, I wish this whole situation gets, uh, you know, in a better shape for everyone. 
because you know i would love to get out sometime and you know be able to capture stuff like this in the near future and enjoy <laughs> the outdoors or the outside in this case uh but anyhow notice how the previous clip i'm gonna go ahead and mute the song real quick so you can kind of like focus on this but notice how if i hit play notice how the camera's moving from the right side of the screen in this case to the left if i hit the play button the cart is about to take off and the water starts to pop off and then notice how the other angle switches and it's kind of in a similar space so my job now is to make sure that they both kind of align they're both separate shots it's a completely different card but to the audience and for continuity it doesn't really matter that much um, because it just it conveys the message so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the music again, unmute it, and here we go. And then right there is what I'm gonna cut. And then my job is to make sure that right where that car was, it was already like almost getting to that incline, that I do the same with this one. So I'm gonna kinda like cut that, trim that beginning, and then we should be able, but let's see. Perfect, right? So those are the kind of those are the kinds of clips, connecting clips that I always love to do. If I am moving the camera to the left, I want to make sure I'm connecting it to a moving to the left kind of shot, right? So it makes sense. Before I continue, I want to make sure I'm answering your questions. I see Kenny Mon over here. Welcome, welcome to the stream. And I also have Grill Warriors. And you might have said this, but what are you shooting in 4K? Do you say 60 FPS? Yes, most times, not always, but most times I shoot either 1080 60 or 4K 60. And it also depends on the kind of uh, product or scene that you're shooting. If you're shooting something that your intent is to have a cinematic looking footage, you might want to implement the 180 degree shutter rule if it's a very bright day because automatically your camera is gonna crank up your shutter speed and it's gonna give you a very choppy motion look, so to speak. It's not gonna be a, a smooth and cinematic blur. It's gonna be like very crispy and that's why, you know, cinematic footage looks cinematic and standard home recorded footage doesn't. It's because the camera's doing what it wants, but there's a whole different unboxing of things that, and repercussions that will happen if you slow down your shutter speed or increase your shutter speed. So. In this case, I would focus on the transitions first, the motion, the gimbal moves, getting acclimated with the kind of shots that you like to take the most, polish that, and then step it up with understanding what the 180 degree shutter rule is and what are some of the side effects that you will have regarding your exposure, regarding your motion blur, your noise, and things like that. Uh, because if I, was, if I was following the 180 degree rule in the shot, which honestly I wasn't, I was just shooting uh on a regular day i would have needed to include filters and things like that to bring down my shutter speed and for still things to be properly exposed if not things were going to blow up in, in terms of exposure so i would keep it simple at first and then once you're getting acclimated with the look you want and you want to continue to push the envelope the 180 the 180 degree shutter rule is definitely something that i would recommend for you to uh, practice and kind of like engage with we're actually filming a cinematic how to create cinematic footage on your phone uh, in the next coming weeks so keep an eye out for that and hopefully that answers a little bit more of those questions but anyhow let's go ahead and wrap this up in a moment here we're going to go ahead and continue that now notice how we went from walking into the area right with you know roller coaster and the ferris wheel all the way down there by the sun we have a little sign entering the pier we have some flowers closer to the roller coaster and then we have the roller coaster but notice the sun notice where the sun is at the top and notice in the previous shot the sun is really really close so i'm going to use that shine to my advantage and i'm going to introduce a light transition a light leaking transition kind of like a flare so notice in the far right of my frame I have the transition window that popped up and then you do have the option to cycle through a ton of different pre 
establish transitions in Final Cut or any editing software that you're using. I'm currently using Final Cut, but different software options will have their own. I'm gonna go ahead and use these light leak transitions. If I'm not mistaken, these are Ryan Nengel transitions. Uh, you can actually search on the internet for Ryan Nengel. Uh, and he has a lot of really cool uh, plugins and tools that he sells for Final Cut. Uh, so I use a lot of his stuff. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use this really cool transition here, leveraging that flare from the sun over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use 19 here. Let's go ahead and bring that and drag it right in between these two clips. Since everything is like warm, I might not need to tweak anything. So that should be ready to rock and roll. So let's go ahead and hit play and see how that looks. Cool, a little close, a little, little too much. Um, so let me bring down a little bit that scale. I think the scale's already. Yeah, that's already the scale. Maybe the saturation or the hue. Yeah, the value a little bit. You know what, let's leave it the way it is. It's all good. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. It actually doesn't look half bad. It's kind of cool. We could reposition it, move it around, scale it, do whatever we need to do, but for the session you kind of get the idea here so notice how one clip from the flowers were sliding from the right side to the left side and then the next clip completes that motion too from the right side moving to the left side as well so that is very very important for me because it maintains consistency your brain really likes that synergy Imagine if I was going left and then suddenly go right and then pushing back and pushing forward and taking people on a weird spin. You definitely want to make sure you're taking people on a journey. Uh, so make sure you're connecting those clips. That's going to be very, very important in the long term. So um, let's go ahead and wrap it up and add another clip over here. I know I created a really cool shot here of... There we go. And... There we go, you notice that really cool like sliding shot here. So I'm gonna hit hit I right in that beginning of that section there I'm on my uh, uh, viewer. And then end it there. I think I might have another one, let's see. Mm, that looks good, but it goes in a different direction. So yeah, let's go ahead and stick with this one here. I'm gonna bring that down here. Perfect. I'm gonna mute it down. Perfect, and I'm gonna find that starting point. And then I'm gonna slow this down. I'm gonna slow that clip again, slow-mo. Command R, slow it down to 50%. And that should give me perfect. And then I trim that excess at the end because that's either time to end that sequence or add a different shot. So far, so good. This is a simple sequence. I'm going to go ahead and trim also the song so it's we don't need it to be that long. I'm going to bring it down a little bit shorter here and get back in my main fold. Perfect. So if we review this from the beginning, you might notice that the edit is a little offbeat in your end because I do notice a little bit of latency from the time that I hit play to the time that it starts showing you the visual. The sound should be showing up normally, but for some reason, it's a little off. Uh, but after the fact, I'm going to go ahead and upload this to my Instagram and to the YouTube story so you can kind of see what the end result was. And let me know what you think, but there's a couple things that I still want to do um, before we wrap it up, I think I might want to do an additional uh, sequence. Let me see if I have anything else that I might want to add here. Man, this was in the holidays. <laughs> it's crazy. Time flies. Let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and... Since we did that one... We did that one going from the right side to the left side of the frame. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this reveal shot. We're, we're gonna use a transition to make it fit, but I'm gonna go ahead and select that inside frame. 
I really like that shot. And then we're gonna end it there. And that's gonna be kind of like a close shot there. Mute it, slow it down, command R to 50% of its normal speed. Let's go ahead and push the music a little bit further out just in case. And let's hit play. Cool. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a little fade out. I'm going to go to those transitions and just do a cross dissolve to so it rides into the sunset, so to speak. Nice. And that could be a quick Instagram shot. That could be a quick uh, B-roll section inside your entire video. If you're trying to do a tutorial, if you're trying to do any kind of content, a vlog or anything like that, it might be a good idea to insert one of these at the very beginning, just so your audience understands what the end goal is looking like. Um, I really love movies that start with the ending and take you there. <laughs> um, like that Mission Impossible rabbit's foot section, right? How they showed you that section and then it goes back to the beginning and it kind of like shows you the whole situation. Kind of like those kind of movies, right? Oh, let me tell you what happened, right? It's a way to get people excited about what you're doing so all right any questions so far whatsoever feel free to let me know in the comment section down below if you were to have any questions regarding this editing workflow we have one more step to take and then we'll edit it out i do want to add uh, a little bit of color adjustment i'm going to go ahead and add a lut to this a custom lut that i created which is by the way uh, in the description of the video, it should be. It's a, if I'm not mistaken, it's the fall uh, teal and orange. So I created this in the fall uh, before the holiday season. And that's what I used to get the, the kind of like orange and teal. But it's kind of like my take on orange and teal. Taking on, you know, what's already established and kind of like tweaking it a little bit to my preference. I'm more of a warmer, slightly desaturated-ish kind of editor. So... Hopefully you found a little bit of value in that. So now for the colors and for the editing, right? You do have right next to the ribbon. If you look all the way to the right side, there's a little ribbon uh, where the transitions were right next to it. There's an effect browser, right? And here you have a ton of different effects, color and things like that, that you can apply. You can venture into your own color editing if you want to edit things and change the way things look so for example if i grab this clip and i highlight it right the the uh, uh pixar pure uh sign and i want to tweak this i can use the color board to modify it and if i drag that color board on top of that clip then you'll be able to see that now under effects on the top right there's like a row that i have highlighted here in yellow that's a color board one if i click on that little triangle i now have the option to tweak the colors and things like that you do have the option to engage in color wheels and say hey color wheels i want to modify like my shadows i want to make my shadow shadowier or more saturated or more of an orangey or tealy shadow right so you do have the option to make some of those modifications. But in this case, since I already created my own LUT, I'm not gonna be doing that because I did that in order to create the LUT, so to speak. Um, but since the footage on this phone is also very well balanced, so to speak, there's really not that much that I need to do. So what I do I recommend doing is going into Ryan Nangle's website. Um, if you search on Google for Ryan Nangle, he has an adjustment layer option. For you to be able to download in my case if i click all the way to the left side of my uh, frame here on the top left there's a t for text and generators and that's where i am right now t and generators top right right under that little in, uh, import uh, arrow and if i go to titles that's usually where the adjustment layer resides and an adjustment layer is like just an additional layer on top of your video that adds any type of adjustment that you would like to the color, to the behavior, whatever it is. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that long adjustment layer there and just have it the entire 
section there. You do have the option to apply colors clip by clip by clip, but it's just so unproductive that I'd rather apply my LUT to the entire clip and be done with it. You do have situations where you will encounter that you might have to tweak the intensity and you do have the option to chop the adjustment layer and make changes accordingly. So, oh, like it was darker for the last clip. So I do have the option to cut the adjustment layer and make separate adjustments as I see fit. But in this case, since everything is relatively in a similar lighting, we're just going to keep it as one big chunk. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that LUT uh, option under my effects. You can actually search for LUT. Final Cut has it. Premiere Pro has it, of course. Luma Fusion has LUT support, which is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and grab that LUT, custom LUT and bring it over to that adjustment layer. So notice that I have the adjustment layer highlighted and then at the top right, it says custom LUT. This is the section where you would search for the actual LUT file. LUT is short for lookup table. It's like a recipe that tells the program what colors to apply, so to speak. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the teal and orange that I put in the description. And notice how automatically everything is like orangey. So right now by default it's a little too intense. So I'm going to bring down the mix to probably 7 or 6%. And that is what's going to give the video a little extra zizzle in terms of the colors, the warmth, the notice how the sky in the top right is a little bit more teal than just regular blue and the chat and the kind of like the grounds a little bit more orangey. So if I were to turn off my adjustment layer, that's before and that's after. It just gives it a little bit more of a, you know, warmer tone, so to speak. So it's one of my favorite, uh, you know, options to be able to apply that LUT. And it's just so easy. Once you create your own LUT, you do have the option to download or purchase different LUTs from different creators. Uh, Ryan Angle has a ton of them. Uh, Matty Hapoya has, sells a ton of them. Peter McKinnon sells a ton of them. There's just so many options out there that you can download as well. Um, or you can also download mine is in the description. It's a free download, by the way, uh, for a limited time because I'm compiling a combination of different LUTs for different seasons and whatnot. But since you're here, why not? <laughs> so once this whole thing renders, we should have a little bit better visual of what our little 30 second sizzle B-roll looks like uh, for any kind of marketing video, any kind of introduction video, any kind of vlog B-roll sequence. Uh, so once the little dotted line at the top is done rendering i'm going to go ahead and hit play now it's a really good time if you were to have any questions or any thoughts drop them in the comment section down below if you have any suggestions or anything else like that hopefully this gives you a little bit better uh, idea of what goes behind the scenes whenever you see those really cool uh, b-roll sequence not only from my channel but also from other creators it's a lot of work. We've been at it for about an hour now, and we've only done about 30 seconds. Of course, if I was just like ramping up, we could have definitely done a uh, faster. But this is where, this is the the point in your video journey where your creativity kind of like just becomes more evident. Because when you're filming, you're filming thinking of the editing, but when you're editing, you discover so many other possibilities. That you might be derailed to, oh, well, what about if I do this? What about if I do that? So being aware and fully uh, in tune with your software is going to give you the option, of course, to exploit those ideas whenever they manifest. All right, almost ready. So we're going to review this. Once again, if you want to see the final result, I'm going to go ahead and post it towards the very end so you can see uh, that final video in my social media outlets, Instagram and uh, YouTube Story, so you can see how the whole thing looks out. So let's check it out.
cool. All right, guys. So that was a little bit of editing uh, live with with uh, Final Cut Pro. Of course, this works with any kind of software uh, that you're using to edit. I threw out a different, uh, a little poll in my community tab on my YouTube channel, and a lot of people reacted to the video editing. So that's why I wanted to kind of like jump in and showcase a little bit of what I do uh, regarding the editing workflow. Uh, so if you were to have any questions or any concerns after the fact, make sure you leave a comment. Uh, make sure you share it if you find value in it. And if you know somebody that, hey, you know, you might actually benefit from this, it would definitely mean a lot to me. So I'm going to give it a couple seconds here for the stream to catch up and see if you have any questions, any thoughts. If not, we will wrap it up. All right. Well, guys, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to hang out with me. We've been going at it for a little over an hour. That's where we started our session, and we went over from importing into Final Cut. Before that, we talked a little bit about importing the footage and how we organize it outside of Final Cut. Then we went ahead and talked about the music, right, where I get the music from Hello Thematic, and we went through the motions of editing that clip by clip and adding music, transitions, sounds, and really cool effects. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a deeper understanding of what happens once again behind the scenes and, and, and it motivates you uh, to explore your editing software and you know get creative and level up your, your video for whatever project you're looking to create. So thank you so much for hanging out guys. I appreciate your time and I hope everybody is safe. Have a fantastic day.